I'm not completely sure I can handle all of this. I'm your host Yusuf, and these are 10 unsettling government secrets the CIA tried to hide. Make sure you subscribe and ring that bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Anyways, let's hop, skip, and jump to it. Number 10, Acoustic Kitty. Acoustic Kitty was a central intelligence agency project launched by their Directorate of Science and Technology in the 1960s, which intended to use cats to spy on the Kremlin and Soviet embassies. In an hour-long procedure, a veterinary surgeon implanted a microphone in the cat's ear canal, a small radio transmitter at the base of its skull, and a thin wire into its fur. This would allow the cat to innocuously record and transmit sound from its surroundings. Due to problems with distraction, the cat's sense of hunger had to be addressed in another operation. Victor Marchetti, a former CIA officer, said Project Acoustic Kitty cost about $20 million. The first Acoustic Kitty mission was to eavesdrop on two men in a park outside the Soviet Embassy in Washington, D.C. The cat was released nearby, but was hit and allegedly run over by a taxi almost immediately. However, this was disputed in 2013 by Robert Wallace, a former director of the Office of Technical Service, who said that the project was abandoned due to the difficulty of training the cat to behave as required, and the equipment was taken out of the cat, the cat was re for a second time, and lived a long and happy life afterwards. What do you guys think is the true story here? Number 9, Battalion 316. Intelligence Battalion 316 was the name of a Honduran army unit responsible for carrying out political assassinations and torture of suspected political opponents of the government during the 1980s. Battalion members received training and support from the United States Central Intelligence Agency both in Honduras and at military bases in the US. Battalion 601, including Juan Siga Correa, who had collaborated with the Chilean DINA a in assassinating General Carlos Prats and had been trained along with Mohammed Ali Sanaldin, the Argentine Anti-Communist Alliance. At least 19 of Battalion 316 members were graduates of the School of the Americas. The Battalion 316 was also trained by Pinochet's Chile. Number 8, Operation Chaos. Operation Chaos, or Operation MH Chaos, was a Central Intelligence Agency domestic espionage project targeting American citizens operating from 1967 to 1974, established by President Lyndon B. Johnson and expanded under President Richard Nixon, whose mission was to uncover possible foreign influence on domestic race, anti-war, and other protest movements. The operation was launched under Director of Central Intelligence Richard Helms by Chief of Counterintelligence James Hesu. Angleton and headed by Richard Ober. The MH designation is to signify the program has a global area of operations. The CIA was charged with the collection, correlation, and evaluation of intelligence. While the act does not specify a prohibition on collecting domestic intelligence or a restriction to only collect foreign intelligence, Executive Order 1233 of 1981 added prohibitions to limit CIA activities. Number 7, Partnering with Substance Dealers Illegal labs producing a syringed substance were first discovered near Marseille, France in 1937. These labs were run by Corsican gang leader Paul Carbone. For years, the Corsican underworld had been involved in the manufacturing and trafficking of substances, primarily to the United States. It was this substance network that eventually became known as the French Connection. The Corsican gang was protected by the CIA and the SDECE after WW2 in exchange for working to prevent French communists from bringing the old port of Marseille under their control. Number 6, Abandoning Tibet. The CIA Tibetan program was a nearly two decades long anti-Chinese covert operation focused on Tibet, which consisted of political action, propaganda, paramilitary, and intelligence operations based on US government arrangements made with brothers of the 14th Dalai Lama, who was not initially aware of them. The goal of the program was to keep the political concept of an autonomous Tibet alive within Tibet and among several foreign nations. Although it was formally assigned to the CIA, it was nevertheless closely coordinated with several other US government agencies such as the Department of State and the Department of Defense. Previous operations had aimed to strengthen various isolated Tibetan resistance groups, which eventually led to the creation of a paramilitary force on the Nepalese border consisting of approximately 2,000 men. By February 1964, the projected annual cost for all CIA Tibetan operations had exceeded $1.7 million in US currency. The program ended after President Nixon visited China to establish closer relations in 1972. The Dalai Lama criticized this decision, saying it proved wholeheartedly 
repeatedly that the US never did it to help the people of Tibet. Number five, the disposition matrix. The disposition matrix, informally known as a removal list, is a database of information for tracking, capturing, rendering, or removing suspected enemies of the United States. Developed by the Obama administration beginning in 2010, it goes beyond existing removal lists and is intended to become a permanent fixture of US policy. The process determining criteria for removing is not public and was heavily shaped by National Counterterrorism Director and former Central Intelligence Agency Director John O. Brennan. Though White House National Counterterrorism Center and CIA spokespeople have declined to comment on the database, officials have stated privately that removal lists will expand for at least another decade, if not indefinitely. One official stated, it's a necessary part of what we do. Paul R. Pillar, the former deputy director of the CIA's counterterrorism center, has stated, we are looking at something that is potentially indefinite. The database's existence was revealed in a three-part series published by the Washington Post. Number four, the Edgewood Arsenal human experiments. From 1948 to 1975, the US Army Chemical Corps conducted classified human subject research at the Edgewood Arsenal facility in Maryland. The purpose was to evaluate the impact of low dose chemical warfare agents on military personnel and to test protective clothing, pharmaceuticals, and vaccines. A small portion of these studies were directed at psychochemical warfare and grouped under the prosaic title of the Medical Research Volunteer Program. The MRVP was also driven by intelligence requirements and the need for new and more effective interrogation techniques. Overall, about 7,000 soldiers took part in these experiments that involved exposures to more than 250 different chemicals, according to the Department of Defense. Some of the volunteers exhibited symptoms at the time of exposure to these agents, but long-term follow-up was not planned as part of the DOD studies. The experiments were abruptly terminated by the Army in late 1975 amidst an atmosphere of scandal and recrimination as lawmakers accused researchers of questionable ethics. Many official government reports and civilian lawsuits followed in the wake of the controversy. Number three, extraordinary rendition. Extraordinary rendition is a euphemism for state-sponsored forcible abduction in another jurisdiction and transfer to a third state. The phrase usually refers to a United States-led program used during the War on Terror, which had the purpose of circumventing the source country's laws on interrogation, detention, extradition, and or torture. Extraordinary rendition is a type of extraterritorial abduction, but not all extraterritorial abductions include transfer to a third country. The administration of President George W. Bush abducted hundreds of illegal combatants for U.S. detention and transported detainees to U.S. controlled sites as part of an extensive interrogation program that included torture. Extraordinary rendition continued under the Obama administration with targets being interrogated and subsequently taken to the U.S. for trial. A 2018 report by the Intelligence and Security Committee found the United Kingdom, specifically MI5 and MI6, to be complicit in many of the renditions carried out by the US, by helping to fund them, by supplying intelligence, and by knowingly allowing the abductions to happen. Number two, Operation Charlie. Operation Charlie was allegedly the codename given to a program during the 1970s and 80s undertaken by the Junta in Argentina, with the objective of providing military and counterinsurgency assistance to right-wing dictatorships and insurgents in Central America. According to Noam Chomsky, the operation was either headed by the Argentine military with the agreement of the United States Department of Defense, or was led by the US and used the Argentinians as a proxy. Number one, Operation Condor. Operation Operation Condor was a United States backed campaign of political repression and state terror involving intelligence operations, CIA backed coup d'etats, and assassinations of left wing socialist leaders in Latin and South America from 1968 to 1989. Highly publicized events such as the assassination of Cuban revolutionary Che Guevara by CIA backed Bolivian forces in October 1967 have been perceived as catalysts that predated the operation. Operation Condor was officially and formally implemented in November 1975 by the right-wing dictatorships of the Southern Cone of South America. Due to its clandestine nature, the precise number of passings directly attributable to Operation Condor is highly disputed. Some estimates are that at least 60,000 passings can be attributed to Condor, with up to 30,000 of these in Argentina. Thanks for watching. Those were 10 unsettling government secrets the CIA tried to hide. Make sure to leave a like and comment if we missed anything, and we hope you have a scary day.